Welcome back, everyone, to the 2015 World Championship Finals. Now, in addition to this amazing audience here in Berlin, people all around the world are tuning in to catch all the explosive action, including this viewing party taking place here in Lucca, Italy. And then, of course, we're going to follow that up with one from Barcelona, Spain. Lots of energy there in that very tight space. And then, not to be outdone, the fans have assembled in mass at Le Zenith in Toulouse, France. And then, of course, from there, we're going to check in with another Coke viewing party. This one is taking place in Bellevue, Washington. And I'm sure all of these fans across the world, as well as the ones here in the, in the venue itself and myself, want to see more than three games. I'm hoping for five games. So, gentlemen, this is where I turn to you. It's do or die time here for the Koo Tigers. So, in one sentence, <laughs> or, no, I'm kidding, not in one sentence or less. No, you just one time down the line. Sorry, starting haiku, with money. Go. What do they need to do? <laughs> yeah, and in a haiku. <laughs> Uh, I think they just really need to keep their heads cool, stay calm and collected, because they were so close to taking that last game, and then they started overextending, were misplaying that Baron after doing seemingly everything right for a few minutes. So I think they just need to take a deep breath, remember what they know about this game, and just slow down the pace a little bit in the next game. All right, Kobe. Definitely want to reiterate, Smeb specifically needs to keep his composure in this game. I'm also going to be looking at the other big star for the team, Gorilla. They need him to make some plays now. The early home guards, get up into Smeb's lane, go for one of those lane ganks that we've seen him do it before, and try and get something growing. I think the biggest mistake Ku made was not predicting the counters to their own plays. They went for a lot of plays where there were obvious counters, where it was like, somebody's missing, I mean, I can't dive here because they could show up during the lane, or we suddenly see a good call mid, but we get out-rotated by SKT, so they need to think more about what happens in a bigger picture overall. They have some really good clutch, like, shot calling in the moment, but then they lose sight of the big picture, and I think that's really hard. It's easy to say. Uh, <laughs> I can it's never do it. Much easier, much easier said than done. Especially when playing against yeah. SKT, because, because SKT so does much it so quickly. So much information denial. Right, SKT known for outthinking their opponents. Now Ku has to outthink the outthinkers. Well, it's time to head down to the stage where Shox is standing by with one of Europe's finest. Who will be? Hi, right, thank you very much, Dash. One of Europe's finest, <laughs> indeed. Top later for Origin, Soaz. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the games coming up. First, I just want to talk to you about a week after getting knocked out and actually having a fantastic tournament with Origin in your first year semifinals of Worlds. How do you look back on everything after a week thinking about it? Well, I, I still feel pretty good about our performance of all. We didn't expect much coming in Worlds, coming at Worlds. So it was a good performance for us, even though we got true by SKT, which is, we could have really well take one game or something, but they are the better team in the end, so I didn't really feel bad. I just like take the experience as it is, and that's it. Well, definitely nothing to be ashamed of, and the people here are always cheering for you. Um, talk to, to me a little bit about this series in particular. You guys were exactly in the same situation after game one versus SKT. You had a close game that you could have been able to win, what happens to you after that versus a team like SKT? What position do Ku find themselves in now? Um, I, I believe their second game could have gone either way. Like the game they just play right now. Um, they just need to take it slowly. Uh, as Kripo said, they, they need to rethink about like everything they like, every thing they are going to do in the game of all. And yeah, they just need to, to take it slow because they, they tend to be a super active team overall. So, yeah, they need to think a lot more about like, what they're going to do for the next step. I always like, think about what enemies can do and what they can do, and I think they can probably take one game at least. Yeah. All right, well, then looking at maybe the top lane specifically, when you say they need to take a step back, we were looking at Smeb and Marin a lot. What have you made of the matchup so far with Smeb going for those playmaking champions, but it doesn't seem to bring them the rewards? It looks like Marin is like they completely uh, shifted the the, the play the overall. Like Marin is more going for like team fight champion, play Rumble two games, going looking for lane swap so it can be more useful in the, in team fight overall compared to Fiora and uh, Riven. Um, I, I think it would be different games if they face one v one two versus two because in this game they had Rexai against uh, Jarvan, which is the uh, Rexai is the stronger matchup. So. I think they could have snowballed a lot more if it was 1v1. So, in my opinion, they should probably try to find where they want to go since level 1. And depending on jungle and top lane matchup, they, they can probably snowball from there. All right, so you say they can take one game, 
can they turn the whole thing around or is it SKT win? I, I think it's always really hard, especially at this level, uh, to actually come back from a 2-0. From the last game, it looks like they, they can take one game and it depends like about SKT most, mostly like or if they if they stay calm if like if they want to change their play or anything obviously they are too old so they are probably not going to change anything so it's cool that I have to bring something new or something else to actually take one game well the pressure is on Ku thank you very much so as for uh, talking to me here and we're going to go into the next game game 3 with our casters Thank you very much, Shox, and awesome to hear from Soaz, a player who recently felt the pressure of SKT on him, and they are one game away from raising the Summoner's Cup yeah. once again, which puts even more pressure on the Ku Tigers, and they've been feeling it since game one. It's a scary thing when some of their parts of the game we felt Ku Tigers could, Ku Tigers could challenge SKT in. They haven't right. been able to. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, shot calling wise, late game, it's gone horribly wrong for Ku Tigers. They've not been able to win the split push war either because Smep has not been performing. In this match here, he had such a good opportunity in the last game and he missed it. And then Marin just picking team fighting champion, saying, I will out team fight you now. You can't yeah. win one versus one, I'll just go on five versus five. And I think that's the scariest thing is that Marin isn't even needing to play the matchup against Smeb that you thought maybe you'd have to neutralize him. Smeb's been crushing everyone, but now Marin's playing team fighters into him and still finding success. Yeah. And there's no way, in my opinion, that SKT makes the same type of blunder at the start of game three that they did in game two. So Ku Tigers really has to step up their game if they want to take one. And now you have a problem for if you're the Ku Tigers. We expect Rek'Sai to come in for SKT like they did in game one. The thing for Ku Tigers is, I don't think they really want the Lulu pick because we've seen Faker can play like Cassidy into it and Koro didn't really do a whole lot. They might be forced to take it anyway just because it's yeah. open, but they would most likely prefer to go something like Shen and Fiora and try and do what they did in game two, have that set up at least, but this time around execute it better. You just had like 10, 15 minutes to talk about what went wrong, why didn't we win the game? So far one for one at least with that one because Fiora <laughs> has been instant luck. Ku Tigers needs to find a way mm -hmm. to go back to what worked for them when it comes to Smep being a split pusher. And you just have to try and make less mistakes. I know it sounds easy, but... No. Yep. And they're not gonna go with Lulu. I think they want Kuro and Victor. I honestly think Ku Tigers just want all of their individual best champions. Smep, Fiora, Kuro, Victor, Hojin Get already on Lee Sin. His name used to be Lee. Get Shen now yeah. for the support before SKT can lock in Rek'Sai and Shen. And Ash has been their most successful lady carry. I like the yeah. idea of Ash for them. Said before, they bring out the Zack, they bring out the Ash. You have to play differently around that. It's something that absolutely caught Fnatic off guard when they played just Ash Arrow down Whoa. the mid lane in the engage, but okay. that's Cassidy as well. <laughs> so, Ku Tigers are saying, you can play Cassidy into our Lulu. We will now try and do exactly the same. Only differences, there is a no hard- A lot of differences. Yeah, it's a lot of obviously player-wise fake of Koro, <laughs> but there's also no hot or no great wave play AD carry. Ash takes a little bit more time taking down these waves compared to right. Sivir, which was one of the reasons it could work for SKT, because they could move, move Sivir to mid lane and have Kassadin in the side lane. Exactly, as well as having the wave clear, SKT also had Rumble in the top lane, so they had a big AoE team fighting presence if the Kassadin was away farming. Ku has two melee mid laners and not much wave clear as an AD carry. SKT, even though you normally don't think of Rumble Sivir going with Lulu, you actually put the Sivir with the Lulu here because it's something SKT has done very well in the past. They have incredible wave clear, great team fighting, and a high early power spiking team. This is exactly what SKT should do. You know what feels good? When you can play the same champion three times in a row. He's already feeling good on it. He's been making great equalizers going to do it again this game. And again, it's just been this pick that's not going to win the one versus one against the Fiora, but it's going to sit back at its own tower. And yep. if you ever want to tower dive it, the hourglass, the amount of damage you can put down with your AoE abilities is enough to at least buy time for SKT to make a play elsewhere. Wow. But Good Tigers is going full pick composition right here. We are going to look to catch off targets with Ash Arrow. We're going to have to hook from a Thresh, Lee Sin, single them out and one shot them. And they have to play it so perfectly because they are at such an immense disadvantage as far as wave clearing is concerned in this game. Like, this is 100% a pick composition, but the question will be whether or not their turrets are collapsing around them as they're yeah. trying to get fights. Because every time they commit to a kill, three or four people, where is SKT going to go? And that will be the story of this game. Sivir once again for Bang, telling you SKT is going to be throwing that on constantly. We see Faker pushing the mid lane as well with Lulu trying to keep Kuro down. It was vice versa last time. 
We'll see what he can make happen as they get out of champion select in the next 10 seconds. It looks like Ignite for the mid laners again. Yeah. I'm absolutely loving the fact that they switched away from the TP action there in the mid lane. Basically looking to be stronger when we have these fights going on instead of having the global pressure. Even though I still like it on a Kassadin to have that teleport, especially yeah. now when it's so hard to execute your composition. Like, credit to Ku Tigers for saying, we just lost two games in a row. We don't care. We will pick a comp that is so hard to play. And we trust in our ability to pull it off and then try and get a comeback going. Sometimes you got to test yourself to really find that inner skill. And hopefully they can bring it out here in game three. The teams are about to hit the rip for game three. So update your series predictions. Hashtag SKT win or hashtag KOO win. We'll update the fan vote once we are into game. We're very close to that Summoner's Cup for SKT. Ku now trying to hang on to their World Championship hopes. They've made it all the way here in their first year as a team, really scrapping things together and hopefully bringing out their first victory in the World Finals here. And even though there are holes or weaknesses within this team composition for Ku that can be exploited, I still love the fact that they have picked these specific champions for this composition. Ku Tigers, when they made their recovery, out of having a poor summer split. It mm -hmm. was a lot of Ash and it was a lot of pick compositions. They are playing champions that they are comfortable on. And that is so important because we're worried about them tilting off the face of the earth when SKT <laughs> turns around that game too. So how do you get your comfort back? It is in the champion picks. And Ku is just gonna try to outplay the crap out of SKT in this game. Looks like things are gonna be very calm to start this one off. It's definitely SKT's game to lose off the bat. Full control of the early game would pretty much solidify the win here as Ku, in their attempts to do Baron last game, and their attempts to kind of pressure the turret, they aren't really trial and erroring. They're not seeing how SKT is acting, so it's flying every time they go in. They have errors left and yeah. right, or they split. I want to see SKT lane fight. flip, though, in this game here, because I think Ku Tigers have some very, very strong lane setups. Ash is a fantastic laner, yep. and she has a range support and Thresh next to her against an Alistar, so that's very good for Ku mm -hmm. Tigers. Fiora into Rumble, give her that one on one lane from the start as well. That's what we see from SKT now. They're like, okay, we're staying on bottom side in case they were invading. We were showing we were down here. Maybe we would trick them into thinking we were going to be on the bottom side. Yep. Now they swap it up top lane here. So they do get the lane swap for SKT. I think that's very important for this early game. But they have made mistakes in the lane swap for the last two games. They didn't bounce the wave in game one. Mm -hmm. And obviously, last game was this crazy level one, level two thing yep. where Martin then ends up teeping down with no flash and dying as well. If we're talking just the first five minutes of the game, Ku Tigers has been the better team. Sadly, games are not only five minutes long. Ah. I think that's something that SKT realizes well in advance as well. You see all these kills going to Ku around the map. SKT kind of has this database in their head. They say, you know, we could lose about five kills here, but if we get kills in a turret and dragon, we're right back in the game. And that's what they always set up for when they're down. They see yeah. what their opening is to get back in the game. Well, SKT is actually doing about the same play they did earlier because they're sending an invade in to the double jungler. It's just on the different side of the map. I don't know if they're going to be getting over walls on this one. They, they know what mistake no they made last time. Now they're getting away with a bit more resources. No flashes being used there, but they do push Ku off that top side of the jungle. So again, Ku Tigers, they keep starting in the jungle where the enemy AD carry and support is supposed to be, or at least on that side of the map. So they take away their own two camps on top side, which was supposed to belong to SKT because SK Telegram always start in their own jungle. They start really defensively, so they don't deny anything. And now once again, there will be more camps to take for Ku Tigers down on the bottom side of the map. So SKT just instantly want to go up and start yeah. pushing down this tower, swap around, get this lane swap rolling, so you can't just fall further behind. They don't value getting early experience on Marin by taking multiple jungle camps. They just want you safe, and then push down the tower as fast as possible. This top lane going a bit faster. It took Smeb some time to get down to that bottom tier turret. So SKT are going to be able to move a bit quicker here. Those few seconds they get to themselves to back first, get in position, get their wards ready, and start being aggressive on the bottom side of the map is really what puts them ahead. Smeb being late here leaves still a third of this turret up. Yeah, and they're going to teleport in and actually try and save wow. this one. This will be a big question of how quickly Alistair gets down there. And Ku took enough damage from the minion wave that they can't actually threaten a dive. Also a weird move up top. Bang didn't bounce the wave in the top side. See what Hojin does here, but the reason they didn't bounce the wave was because they realized they could TP down bottom lane. So they just wanted to push it out, get some farm going, and then force someone for Ku Tigers to recall and go up to top side and catch that wave so there's not going. these minions are going to waste. So because they saw how slow Ku Tigers were at the bottom side of the map, they felt like we can defend it. Binky moved all the way down, 
TP in as well to stop it. Hojin should, been in, should have been in a position, in my opinion, where he could either threaten them the 4v2 dive super quick, or just go down and realize we were behind him pushing the tower. I need to join in as well before this play even happened and just four man kill this tower because you never want to fall behind when it comes to fast pushing. Well, they have all the pressure on the bot side. They have to watch for Prey to come up in the bottom side of the jungle here. Kuro in a bad spot. He walks right in with Faker on his tail. They're on Bengi, though. The flay back, very nice from Gorilla. Ignite and Flash used to make that happen. Faker now in a real sore spot. It looks like he'll be the next to go down. A bit of a fumble Ruski here coming in from SKT. And Ku are going to pick up some very nice kills all it's around the board. Three assists to Gorilla. It's working out perfectly. Distributing the kills nice. Bang trying to come in now. A huge, I think I can situation from SKT to pick up the little outside experience that would ever happen. They just got eight. Four kills for Hojin in the early game. One goes to Prey. One person and another person. And who wants to die next? And who wants to die next? SKT. I do. Another early game fumble here against Ku, and they pick it up big. Four kills onto Hojin. So what will he do now? Warrior and Shama completed five and a half minutes into the game. I feel like we've seen this before in this series yeah. here. SKT so, makes a lot of mistakes and Hojin picks up all the kills. Yeah, Gorilla's not actually level one in this fight. So the rest of this here, Hojin goes in big. Level three Lee Sin spike. They kill Bengi right at the start. Faker was low on mana and actually had no business stopping that either. Prey, again, not level one, is able to come in and finish yeah. those guys off. And why do Sivir and Rumble come up here when their entire team is already dead? Additionally, Fjord doesn't even have to be involved in this. This was five kills by three people on the Koo Tigers. This is, you know how we said in the first game, there's no way SKT falls as far behind early game as they did in game two? There is a way. That's the way. <laughs> Four kills on a Hojin and a Warrior enchantment already. Not calculating the HP bars quite well in that situation. Possibly a bit of a play. He's got no flash. This could be the finalizer. Hojin holds the resonating strike to cancel out the rest of Faker. And every time we have some of these extremely weird plays where there's no real reason for him to make it, we've got to look at what could be the objective. Why would SKT move in there in the first place? Well, in this case, it was to place a deep ward. And yeah. then they realized Gorilla face checks onto Benkin. They're like, oh. Maybe we can take a fight here. You know, support yep. just face check. We could get one kill. But they don't realize how Faker has no mana. They don't realize how everyone from Blue Tigers could move so quickly there. And really just such a sloppy decision. And also, SKT didn't have the wave clear advantage. So this is exactly what Ku wants to do. They want to find fights in neutral territory when they don't lose objectives. SKT's way of stopping those things from happening is to keep the waves managed. And this becomes extremely volatile for SKT now. Ku already set up to take down Faker behind a second tier turret, but they want to go to the bot lane. Looking now at Bang and Wolf. Marin's going to clear top. Smab's going to have to respect that and stay for the TP. It's down anyways, but we're going to see something happen in that bottom lane, possibly, as teams disperse a bit. It doesn't look like anything came out of it. Rightfully so, Ku would have had to make a pretty big dive. Ku can just sit in the lanes and wait for Lee, oh, sorry, Hojin to show up on his Lee Sin because he's so far ahead, he can take any fight he wants. Mm -hmm. And he can burst you down as soon as he hits level six and this lays in. So wait for him to make that play. Because then you know there's no counter gank from Bengi available. He will be too far behind. And these types of plays are the exact plays that Ku needs. They said they want the crowd to be chanting their name. And that's what they're getting right now. It'll lift the pressure off their shoulders. They know the crowd is behind them. But more so that their strats are working right now. We did see that Hojin was 2-0-2 on Rek'Sai in the early game in game two. 501. Hopefully he can continue to spread his experience to the rest of the lanes and keep the snowball going because they did slow down after they got all those big plays in game two. And now it's also about slowing down the game if you were SKT. Mm -hmm. You know Lee Sin is going crazy. Uh, Faker also doesn't have that much lane pressure on Curl because he's been down his flash and also died twice. Plus he doesn't have teleport, so it's kind of the worst situation you can be in as a mid laner. But SKT still has a lot of wave clear advantages and they have a Rek side who can give himself tremor sense in the jungle. Mm -hmm line up to counter ganks, and more so than actually counter ganking, just tip someone off that they're coming so SKT can run away. They really just want to wave clear for a little while until Ku would make a mistake. We do need to see Hojin, they'll be a bit more aggressive now in this list. They have so many kills, you need to almost live in the enemy jungle. 
and say, I can take any fight possible against this red side. Obviously, nothing completed for Pinky so far other than the side stone. SKT right now, though, have been able to push the top over and over and open up to just take the weapons. And Hojin's going super aggressive. Not only did he complete his warrior enchantment five minutes in, he had enough gold for a side stone, but instead started building Hex Drinker components. Now he's got no wards left. One ward there, Trinket Ward to jump out. He actually can't war jump to pull any type of trickery off. Really would have liked to see Sidestone. I think I one, agree. Of the, one of the best ways to kind of snowball a jungle matchup is not necessarily by trying to kill the other jungler, but by getting wards in his jungle so you can spot him. Arrow onto Faker though. This is a play we're going to see quite often from Prey. He's very good at leaving his own lane in this Ash here, moving towards mid or top lane, set up a possible pick. This time, Hojin gets into the jungle though. This is what we like to see. I just wish he had some wards to be placed in here as well now. <laughs> So you can spot the Rek'Sai next time. Relying yeah. a little too much on Lantern Escape. I think <laughs> I think Lee Sin's one of the best champions who can turn utility into offense. Sightstone increases the offensive capabilities of Lee Sin. Uh, really disagree mm -hmm. with this vibe uh, from Hojin. They've been loving their Hex Drinkers. Game after game, they continue to grab it. We got the Rumble. Faced up. Well, We're usually faced up against the double AP comp so far. We had the Cassidy and Rumble, now Lulu Rumble. Once again, SKT definitely knows where to put that power once the mid game comes. This time, 2,000 gold lead to Koo, 6 to 1, full control of the game. Haven't really been able to keep their deep wards in the side of SKT, so that's slowing them down a little bit. But we know SKT Here they the come. vision denial team. The flash play as soon as he gets it again. Hooks and Faker, the dragon kick back, and that's going to be a dead Faker once again. Nobody's in the back pocket to help him this time. Faker tried to save his flash until all the CC were down first, but then obviously Lee Sin shows up with the Thresh here, kicks him back, and then it's too late for him to do anything. They keep trying to gank this mid lane. You know you have a Cassidy sitting there. And you just keep leaving this bottom side. Roam up through the river, go for the gank. I think it's also critical that they were able to get the kill on a cast in here. So much of the kill distribution is on Hojin, which is why he needs to snowball the game right now. Because otherwise, yes. his gold at the end of the game will not mean that much. And that's why SKT needs to stall this one out. So using the Lee Sin, Thresh, the power of the chain CC right there to punish Faker's greed of not using Flash was very well done. No. To question a bit of this, do they start spreading some love to, to Smeb in the top lane on the Fiora, or is he perfectly fine holding off Marin for as long as possible? I mean, at the moment, if you want to gank Marin, you should realize Bengi will be nearby, because every time mm -hmm. Marin pushes up, Bengi shows himself, gets a ward in the jungle, and she's kind of there for safety. So they're just going to say, no, we can just keep camping in this mid lane. We have double CC, we have the Astral and the Arrow in case we need that one as well. But yes, they could definitely also go and yep. gank Marin. It's just easier to rotate from bottom lane with your support straight to mid lane. That's a quick one, easy gank to set up. It's so hard for Ku to create picks, though, because they're still running without a Sightstone on their whole team. <laughs> he didn't even buy a ward when he went Gorilla back. didn't buy Sightstone, he built boots and mobility, so they're trying to go in blind and make plays with superior combat stats right now. It is absurdly aggressive and incredibly unreliable, but Ku is going all out right here, trying to pull this off. Big change of strategy from Ku Tigers in this game than in prior. It's very clear in the pick and ban phase. Coming into this game, Ku Tiger said, okay, it's all or nothing. Just pick some champions where we can pick them off, skirmish really well, and go crazy. I feel like in the game, though, once you get the five kills, early on, you can then adapt that and say, okay, we don't have to go all in crazy now. Yes. We just got five kills. We can play it out normal and just have a big advantage. Get the five kills, place the wards, and make it easier to pick with yes. all of your pick abilities. Instead yeah. of Ku, what, what they're trying to do is run through <laughs> SKT, force, run into someone randomly, and get the kill. Well, but they, they have, have so they much have brute force. Lips of vision, right? A hawk shot will go out here, a hawk shot will go out there. They'll have somewhat yeah. vision and they'll work off of that bit. But you're, you're right, they don't know who's around the corner after hawk shot's gone. That's why coaches really want to be able to talk in-game. And see the arrow <laughs> misses, but no has been like, guys, go crazy, man, go all in, we're gonna do this. And then when all this happens, he just wanna stand by and be like, okay, slow down. All right, <laughs> yeah. get vision, then we play it out. No way to tell them to slow down right now. Nope. And the wave clear will be punished eventually. They're continuing to keep the pressure on mid lane. And because they are so strong right now with straight up item advantages, Hex Drinker completed, TMI completed, they haven't been punished yet for this, this craziness that they're doing. Oh, they're yes. definitely employing a new strat for this one. Wolf finds he's in a bad situation in the box. Do they have enough to get to Gorilla? Smeb actually teleports down here, but it's called in as well from the other teleports onto Bangi now. Looks like they should be able to get out. Bang does not want the grand oh, challenge. Damn. Wolf goes down immediately. Marin able to teleport, but he wasn't close to the fight. Kuro should go down here. Oh. Over to him. A lantern is one. Oh. Knight still ticks 
through. The flash was burned from Kuro quite a bit as well. This could give SKT a little bit of love around that Dragon area to get more wards and keep fighting. Wow, Sped Hogan's wants to go in. in. They know Gorilla's there, but very low on mana here. Sped Hojin looking to build a little bit of energy as well. I don't think it's a fight either side wants to take, but they were still trying to blow summoners on both sides. Successful at that. That's a one for one mm -hmm. against a team who had seven kills already at 14 minutes against one only from SKT. Them trading even will always be in their favor because you're so far behind. It's never yeah. in the favor of two tigers to just trade even. Hojin even took the kill. Alistar was like 100% dead. Kicks him in the face and kills him. Hojin's going one direction right now. Lee Sin care. That's that's all he's thinking it was right enough now. To he's get trying to put though. the team on his back. And this is also the mentality you put yourself in when you are down 2-0 in a series because you are always trying to make that big right. play. But so far, it's been mostly working for Ku. Oh! He's gonna be out of the, this one. He gets right, the head this in. It's good that he kind of just let ah, it happen. Wanna... You didn't want to try to use too much to get away. He actually did flash in the end, thinking he could break the brush vision, but it did not work. The coup chance come out once again, and they will again deny the resources in the jungle of SKT. Yeah, now you have that side stone, two wards instantly placed in the jungle. You get a pick. Wolf was way out of position trying to place a deep ward himself, but with zero backup from his laners. A mistake we have seen from SKT, Honestly, today a few times where one guy just goes in on his own to place a ward and then gets caught out. Yep. This is what Ku Tiger's composition wants to do. Oh, you alone? You're running way too far ahead of your own team? We have all the tools to CC you and chase you. There's going to be a castle in late game constantly jumping after you as well. And what Ku is pulling off right now is what so many teams unsuccessfully do against well-executed wave clear compositions. Because in order to stop the side lanes from pushing out of control for SKT, you have to kill them before they get up to your turret. And who has been able to find fights and consistently kill, which is why it's just the one turret taken down for SKT versus the two from Ku. And now that they actually do have the double sight stones built up, they can continue to put on the pressure and the vision. Double sight stones means they all swapped over to sweepers. A very early scrying orb still from Prey to go along with his hawk shots have given Ku great vision in this early part of the game to waltz into the jungle of SKT pretty much without any care. Now they have the wards so deep, a pink ward all the way down between the second tier turrets. They have all the vision they need here to make those pick moves they've been wanting to make all game. The only thing SKT is going for them is the fact that Marin, they go hit level 11 soon, which is good spikes for them when it comes to a possible dragon fight. This is what two Tigers want them. Trying to stop SKT in their perfect run from having a perfect run in Worlds, but yeah. would be the first Ridiculous. in the history of the World Championship. And SKT has been positive. They said, if you know, if this team doesn't beat us, we're more than likely going to go undefeated in the entire tournament. We feel better about it every win. Here they come. This is the crowd control they were looking for. There's no way Bengi gets out of this one. He goes down with the last shot from Prey. 2-0-5 now for the AD carry. And this is what we're going to keep seeing here. Wards being placed. Bengi can no longer sit and farm his own jungle if he ever does so. Expect Ku Tigers to yeah. show up, catch him out like they just did right here. Get that one kill. Problem is, they give up a bot lane tower and only get a kill for it. So technically yep. for them, not the greatest trade, but it did mean yeah. Marin also had to be careful top, so now they can trade the top tower. It's a delayed trade. It's still favorable for the Koo Tigers because they got the map pressure. Uh, kill Squad, Hojin and Gorilla, they have been successfully creating these picks. 100% kill participation for Hojin, 90% kill participation for Gorilla, and it's allowed Smeb to not have to carry. So much of this entire world and exactly of the first right. two games have been Smeb carrying, and he was pushing too hard in the first few games. Now the weight is being taken off of Smeb's so shoulders in this game, and it's actually been Hojin. I was just going to say that one of the biggest changes from both of the games we've seen is that Ku is not focusing top. They're not trying to get things for Smeb. They're not trying to stop Marin. They've stayed away from that, and it's working perfectly for them because SKT turns those fights around. Looking at 20 minutes coming up on the clock now. 10 to 2, the biggest lead Ku has had here in these games, as well as a 5,000 gold lead coming up on that 20 minute mark. And Dragon coming up in 12 seconds. It's what a pick composition lives for. Not yep. necessarily doing the Dragon, but killing someone when they're <laughs> trying to get vision or contest the Dragon. It's dinner time. Fortunately for SKT, though, they've been able to get a lot of wards preemptively around the Dragon Pit since Ku just committed so many people to killing the other side of the map. So the picks will be harder to come by. 
every time Ku has killed them, one other guy snuck in behind them and placed two or three wards in the yeah. river, and then they had to escape. But they always gave up a kill for it. So Ku Tigers kept getting, you know, further and further ahead in terms of gold. We're still only 19 minutes into the game. There's plenty of time for the Ku Tigers to use all this gold here to their advantage. For now, they're gonna have to fight for vision, and SKT gets at least an entrance. And I have to reiterate how difficult it is to beat SKT, because they've been able to get those wards here. And they actually have a power spike here, with Marin being level 11 on Rumble. A well-placed equalizer at this dragon fight, even yes. with the 5,000 gold difference, could win a fight for SKT. One of the problems, though, for Marin, and that's also why he's down on the bottom side here, is if he goes top now to catch his wave, which he probably will to defend the tower, when you're against Cassidy and Ash and so on, they can hard engage in and pick off one target. Your teleport becomes very difficult to use because obviously there's this delay on the teleport casting before you arrive. Two Tigers might have picked up a guy before Marin even gets to TP in. So him sitting there means Two Tigers can be the proactive team now. Look for that one arrow here. Look for Kuro to catch out a guy. A lot of damage on Gorilla though. Uh, if they start the dragon, that's going to mean even more damage. They don't necessarily have someone who can tank the dragon without taking any pain. Uh, and maybe this control. turns into a steal opportunity because Bangi would be able to tunnel in and try and get something. Ku is forcing really hard to try and get a fight. Ku Tiger's chance resonating through the halls of the Mercedes-Benz Arena here in Berlin. Hojin takes the dragon. Smab TP's into the backside. They're still getting out. This is where the picks come in. Wild growth on the Bangi. The focus is Mar, and he's away from the team. Smab wants to keep everybody in range, but he's gone on a one-man yeah, no. mission over here. Bangi gets out. Smab lunges back. Gorilla is a one health from being taken down right now and Ku doesn't get enough of the picks that they want but Marin does go down from being in the thick of the fight. Wow and how close this fight really was. It is an advantage for Ku to get the dragon and the kill Absolutely. but if we're thinking about total damage dealt in that team fight, SKT actually did more. Pretty much everyone on Ku took 80% of more the of their health bar. They can absolutely bring the pain, especially if SKT funnels in like that, chasing Gilles. See it again. You can see how SKT knows they don't want to risk someone going down before Marin arrives. So he goes in fairly early with Teleport and beautiful ult yeah, on three huge. guys from the Ku Tigers. This delays everything. They're trying to chase, but they're so split up now. Smep doesn't even get Benki down, but in the end, they win the fight. Woo. They get this dragon here like they're supposed to. Bang was very, very close to suddenly being able to get a few kills. Absolutely. Bang maybe could have played that a little more aggressive, but still, when you're down 11 kills to two, your aggressive moves have been biting you time and time again. And Ku is really looking to take this series back. Gorilla surviving that fight with six HP. Some thick skin there to keep him alive. Ignite still up. Kill pressure from him to come into the next fight if necessary. And this may be that time again. Ku starts to taunt Baron, but more of a trial and error here. See how SKT reacts and then act on that. It's the time for Ku Tigers to start getting the pink wards. Upgrade your sweepers yes. here, both on Gorilla and Hojin, because you need to be able to deny vision at the dragon at the Baron. Force SKT to face check in and then again create this pick for you. Just shoot an arrow in their face. SKT have all five members nearby. Coral take a bit of damage, but you can see how they're fighting because SKT knows if they give up that jungle, yeah. it's over. Because yeah. then the Baron will be started, they they're completely blind, and then they will die in the next team fight. So that's why they're here so early to fight just for vision. There's always these pre fights before the big team fight where you fight all the small advantages. Who can see who? Can they start the Baron safely? There's no tank no. on the lineup of Foot Tigers. That makes it tricky, and that's why they need game. a kill first. A little game of cat and mouse here. Are you going to approach? How do you approach? Can we cut you off? Can we get that pick when you're rotating towards the Baron? Who have a lot of room to work with right here outside the vision of SKT. Marin should not be on the bottom side of the map at the moment. He has no TP. This yeah. just gave Ku Tigers the jungle, and they're pushing him for top tower. Yeah, because now SKT can't actually hold this turret with wave clear in fear of a dive. The wave going through, the crowd has been cheering for Ku, and it looks like the arrow hits Bang. The spell shield is on, he does not get crowd control. That's the grand challenge on Bangy. thrust, thrust, parry, and he gets the kill. 13 to two as they start cleaning up SKT without losing any members in the side of Ku. Ku Tigers has successfully put an element of chaos into this game, which is making SKT make bad decisions. That was a bad decision. Marin wasn't able to defend. The dive is very real with an Ash Arrow initiate plus a Lee Sin with Flash, and they are rightfully punished for that move. And now with two death timers looming, the Baron becomes another problem. Crowd started chance, people.
standing up and creating these chances for Coons. Exactly oh, what Coons Coons wants. Oh, Baker flash into the wall. Wolf's going to go down now. Gorilla has gone down to Marin, but it's Kuro and Mar now. Marin knows he's not going to get out of this one safely. Slowed once again. I don't believe the volley just yet, but they're going to be in range. Who are they going to give it to? Merry Christmas and early Christmas to pray. SKT managed to stop the Baron, but that was about it. Three kills again for Good Tigers. Summoner spells used. This is looking so, so bad. And really, this game exploded. I'll say it's looking good for Q. It looked great for Q, obviously. <laughs> bad for SKT, but really, we had the five kills early on, and then Good Tigers got a few kills here and there. See what happened it here really one more time. exploded when it started getting into that jungle. Get down the vision and been able to create these picks here. Faker, even oh Faker, can flash into the wall. When you have Faker failing a flash over wall, you know something is amiss within the SKT team. They've been making bad calls. Mm -hmm. Faker, I can't remember the last time I've seen him miss a flash. Just reminds us that he's human. And One if, of us. if there's ever a time for SKT to drop a game, guys, it's now. <laughs> 8,000 gold down. Ku continually finding team fights again and again. And I'm going to have to question, if Ku's able to win this game, do they actually completely turn the momentum of the series? Because remember, they were winning, in a, they were in a position to win game two. Yes. But then we saw some of the problems for them late game with the shot calling. Right. This game, that should not be an issue when you're so far ahead now. Your composition, at this point, is going to be straightforward to play because you just keep baiting around the Baron and then you just fire that arrow from Prey and you take that team fight. It is hard to get to this point for Good Tigers. Due to the fact that they got so many early kills, it made it a lot easier for them. They've been able to execute it properly now. And we're just waiting for that finish. Because right now, SK is hurt. They're not they're, dead yet. They're not dead yet, but this is finally Ku breaking through that mental barrier that SKT puts up. We saw Faker go down twice to West Door alone in lane, and Faker was almost smiling, laughing, knowing that they would come back because they have the confidence. Here, that seems to be broken. SKT always turning tail to these fights to see if they can assess and go back in, but it has been for not. Yeah, and actually SKT going for a big fight in the mid lane. Arrow straight to the face of Bang, stops Gorilla from going down. Initiations on both sides of On the Hunt, Crystalline Arrow and Box are down. And something we actually have to talk about, SKT ran Lulu Sibber frequently throughout the regular season, and they use as a mid-game power spiking team that got picks. But when it falls That's behind, big. it is really difficult for it to come back since it has to move as a unit. Now that Sibber ulti is gone, it could have opened up for Ku Tigers to maybe make a play on the bottom side against Marin, send down Hoji and just 2v1 dive him. Instead, they're returning to the Baron. Back the ways from the bottom lane here with yeah. Sibber. Ku has not hesitated on any of their calls this game. That's a risky call, though, because they are on a scrying orb. And now the teleport's coming in. Marin down. Their target is actually to stop Ku and their flank back. We Koo see Baker and low. Wolf messing with Meb down here, but it is not working out for them. Lunging over the wall, Ku is instantly back in position. This should not hurt them too much. A lot of ultimates are already being used by SKT. Remember, Wolf's ult is down from that second tier turret in mid, so they can't afford to go back in. Remember that this team does not have a tank who's going to stack armor that can safely stand in front of this yeah. Baron here. It was casted in and so on. Trying to bounce it with Hoji, and both of them took a lot of damage. And you're against the Rumble. You never want to start a fight low against the Rumble, because that's just going to be terrible for you. Then, here's a fight! It's a bit of a flank here. Prey very low on mana, but you don't need that to auto-attack. That's going to be Wolf down. We Beautiful also lost kick. Meb in the fight. Marin holding tight in the middle. They get the turret, so they'll be able to fight under it now. Hojin doing what he can with such an awesome score in this game. And it looks like it's going to be a lot for the team. That's a double. Faker gets hit by the arrow. That's going to be a kill for Prey as well. Is there a triple coming in here? No, it's a double-double for Kuro and Prey. Another on SKT. team fight win there by the Ku Tigers. And honestly, if there was ever a fight that SKT is going to win there, it would have been that one. Ku was so low on resources beforehand, but SKT had such a gargantuan goal deficit. And Hojin is playing out of his mind on Lee Sin with a beautiful kick on to bang back into the team. This gives him Baron too. Wow. Hojin is a jungler that has been criticized for a very poor early game coming into this final. All three games now, he's had a... Very, very good early game. He's picking up early kills, early assists. He's applying a lot of pressure on the map. Obviously, there's a few things maybe he can still change, but after all, he's playing a lot better now in that early game. You see the fight, Smep goes down very early, but this kick from Hojin oh, is massive. One, two, three. Tower is Line still alive as well, and it's just straight into Koro. He gets that kill, and now they can start chasing. And Hojin also landed 
The Sonic Wave, the instant Marn came out of Zanya's. Then they clear his corpse out of the way, land the Ash Arrow onto Faker, and chase down the rest of it. They are really in sync right now, which is something that was distinctly lacking in games one and two. So he changes his name back to Lee after this one. What play is coming, in, <laughs> coming in from Hojin. Last game he was 202 and he, he kind of divvied up the kills after that a little bit more. Now he's 6 0 14. It seems like getting more of that experience, more of that cash on Hojin it definitely pays off for the team. Another game where Prey has come up big as well in the Ash, the initiation that Ku loves so much. Oh, no. It's actually being turned right back onto him. It is the Dark Passage that tries to bring Prey to the light, but it cannot happen. The box goes down, but everybody runs around and it looks like they mitigate that slow. A kill onto Gorilla and now SKT make a bit of their own pit comp with the first headbutt Look going on to Prey. Look at the minimap right now. Koro was sitting in the top lane. No teleport obviously on the Cassidy. And then Ku Tigers to start pushing down to the tier two tower. Only three members against the Saber composition. Yep. These are yep. the kind of mistakes they've made in the other games where even though they had a lead, it never felt like the game was over. Against SKT, the game is never over. No matter how big the lead so is, true. we have seen it time and time again, and that was an example of the Sivir pick composition. Why is Hojin also trying to defend this turret solo? They can get a four-man kick. Bang oh, wants to go a little too deep, gets hit by the turret. Oh, Faker over the wall! A shutdown, that's huge gold for Faker coming in from Hojin. That'll definitely be an item coming online for him. Hits Arrow, but Arrow's not gonna stop this one. Kuro goes down as everybody inside the base does what they can with the globals they have. Smab's still putting pressure on the bottom. If Marin had been there, that would have been detrimental for Ku. Well, they already got all the kills and all they had to do was defend the bottom side. Smab got one tower, but SKT is suddenly picking up, I believe, five kills. Two kills first in the mid lane, or four kills in total here for SKT, and that is massive when you're so far behind. Especially because both Kuro and Hojin had maximum bounties, which means 500 yes. gold for the kill and 300 gold for the assist. 800 total gold for the team amongst both of those. Let's see what happened here. Top thing went a little too close, but they knew what they were doing. Yeah, at this point, I was expecting Kuro to just jump back into his base because he would have been safe. But with the Ash Arrow coming in, I think Kuro was oh. thinking he could convert a kill. Faker saved his ultimate for just the right time, saves Bang. <laughs> in such a close fashion. Wolf takes the arrow, is tanking the turret. Nothing could have gone better there unless they aced the team. And those were members of Ku with Baron. Now, not having it, it's going to be much harder for them to get these waves in. Still on to Smeb, can try to still work that side lane. It's time to relax a little bit if you're the Ku Tigers. In your communication, you're probably yeah. still screaming. You're super hyped. You're about to win this game. Everything has been working for you. Now is where you calm down, you have your shot caller kind of tells the rest of the team, right. okay, what's our next objective? Tier 2 tower and mid lane, how are we going to get it? Well, we can no longer split up because we know Civic can hard engage, and there's enough damage on the side of SKT to kill us then. So put the Cassidy with us, slow push the other lane to see top lane was pushing down. They have to go back now and re-push that lane, and then move the Cassidy back into this mid lane, so you avoid being caught up by Sivir. And when the next fight happens, you're all five members there together, and you can use your composition. And with the amount of gold he has, Hojin making a pretty selfish choice in the Banshee's Veil against this double AP team. Still no Aegis on the side of Ku, which could come back to bite him. Yeah, I think the way Ku is approaching this game mentally is skirmish, skirmish, skirmish. skirmish. skirmish yeah. And if they're trapped in a big team fight where they're sitting on an equalizer, they, they're probably thinking they've lost anyway. I still would like to see the Aegis in there for Hojin, but with the Banshee's Veil, when he jumps in and kicks someone backwards, it's much harder for them to get him out of there. Wolf can't headbutt him with first spell, Faker can't polymorph him, they have to burn two spells in order to stop him from doing that. So it's actually kind of an offensive pickup as well. It's still so greedy though, because Banshee's is one of these items that look good on paper, and it's then so one great. ability hit you before the <laughs> fight starts, and it does really nothing for him. Lockett would have been way better for the rest of his team, but Hojin, he's been on a mission to carry this game. It is the pattern of the game. It That's is. exactly Definitely. what he's been doing. Hex Drinker over Sightstone, Warrior Champion. Oh, yeah. Five That's minutes. true. Good call in the it's beginning. It's a there. one track mind here for Ku Tigers. They're going all in on this specific play style, and it is, it is leaking into every single facet of their game. And you got a pocket full of money. Impulse buys happen more than not. And looks like Hojin has been grabbing everything up for himself here. Still looking at a 10,000 gold lead. And Beautiful. possibly a Bengi going down. Knocks him out of the tunnel. Arrow hits Wolf once again. Unbreakable Will completely stops the crowd control. And that was worked perfectly with the tanks on the front line for SKT. They have a chance to go back in. Curl finds himself in a real bad spot. And Smeb is kept at bay. Why are they still going in? Prey was on the front line there. They're going to have Gorilla here. He tries to bob and weave. Slalom the 
minions to slow down SKT, but they're giving back the game inch by inch here. I was just about to praise Crew Tigers for having that slow push on top side and have to cast it and sit ready in the mid lane to create a pick. But then they dive on the tower with Koro tanking the tower as well. And we're 34 minutes in, so this could actually mean the inhibitor going down. Crazy. If you are Ku right now, who does SKT remind you of right now? A team down, holding out with some nice team fighting. I was going to say Bob Ross. Feels like the Koo 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 this game is ruined. Oh, they Smab! Oh, oh, Smab bringing out the plays. He had a bit more to offer. He is just taking the turret with happiness. A smile on his face. A few more hits. Smab coming up with a 2v1 very nicely. And this is where SKT has to turn time. Back alive. They are back. They are on Wolf. That's the not unbreakable. That's a wild growth coming out. Unbreakable Will is up, but I don't even know if he uses it to try and get out here. They're going to try to walk Cool around as much as possible. Face of the mountain is all he's got to offer there as he holds the alt for the possibility of a very big fight in their base coming up. So Smeb has been farming for the last 35 minutes. I think we've barely seen him in this game. He's just been sitting in that side. It's worked so well for Koo. And now, finally, he gets his chance. One versus two, kills them. That was so huge, because SKT were pushing in the base. They were going to get inhibitor, get more kills, get back in the game, and then the outplay happens. After such a turning moment, this is what Koo Tigers talk about when they talk about their team chemistry, honestly, because how many teams at Worlds this year have we seen go down 2-0 and been able to bounce back in the third game? Absolutely nope. Not. And then after making multiple mistakes in the third game, be able to still go for the play and have it work. They have the trust in each other and they've said even when they make a bad play, they can move on from it. That is a perfect example of it working in the game. But still, they're yet to close and they still haven't taken yeah. a single game off SKT. And I'm 100% sure SKT after this game, if they do end up losing it, they're going to sit down and talk about the first five minutes of of these games. Of all games, every yeah, single absolutely. There have been some crazy aggressive plays from SKT where they get punished, plays they didn't have to make in the first place. Why set yourself behind, or why risk setting yourself behind when you've shown that shock holding wise late game, you are the better team? That is something they're going to have to change for the next game if they lose this one. Think of what would happen, though, if those plays had worked. Your mentality to be crushed that hard in the first five minutes of the game. Luckily for Koo, it hasn't for SKT. And they have been falling behind, which is really giving them a chance to right. be in this game. And they're not even on a thread right now. <laughs> it's they are in the lead, <laughs> yeah. pretty much just walking down I mean, the road. It's been plays that you couldn't win. Flashing mm -hmm. forward on the tower to get a first spot is just you trading a kill for kill, but using your flash. Yeah. So like, you are basically <laughs> lost no matter what you do. You talk about trying to be calm as well on a stage like this, World Finals, even though SKT has been there head. before. It's Marin's first Worlds as well. That's there true. is a moment of the spectacle. Here we go. Oh, on what a hit on the Faker. Eyes focused onto him. He's forced to flash over the wall, but it doesn't save him. Kuro gets the shot necessary. A double kill for the Kassadin, and this spells very bad things for SKT. The bottom inhibitor is already broken, feeding super Super minions into the base. This is going to be Marn going down as well as he's too far from home. Over the wall. Bang's going to go down now. The fly in. The lull in. Smab. A few more hits. The parry is great. The thrust is better. And he goes down. Huge kills for Kuro. They're on the Nexus turret. And it looks like they could thwart the perfect record of SKT at Worlds. The first Nexus turret to go down. The ace of SKT in their own base. And the Ku Tigers will break the perfect record at Worlds for SKT. We're going to a game four. Ku Tigers decided to all in on this game here. All the way back in Champ Select, we talked about how risky the comp was, but if it starts to get rolling, how powerful it can be. And for the first time at Worlds, SKT is wounded. Koo Tigers get what they want here. The crowd was chanting Koo Tigers at multiple moments during that last game. And here, once again, there is the crowd behind them. Absolutely amazing. Nobody thought it could be done. So many people saying a 3-0 coming into today, but now we get to see what a broken SKT looks like. Do they come back even stronger? Have you angered the beast on this one? Or are they trying to figure out what happened? I mean, there's very, very clear things for SKT to work on. And Absolutely. Again, looking at those first five minutes where they keep taking some of these fights, they don't have to. That's obviously going to be the main thing for them to change, but also they learned a little bit here. Koo Tiger showed that didn't want the Lula pick. We mentioned how 
it doesn't really benefit mm -hmm. them because of the counter picks we have seen against the Lulu. They didn't take it, gave it over to SK Telecom to Cassidy instead. Ended up getting 10 kills on the side of Koro as soon as we got to these fights and he kept picking off the kills. They picked up the pace of the game. Koo Tiger is something they haven't been able to do for most of Worlds. They've been sitting on the back foot. It was very clear that wasn't going to work against SKT. And yes, SKT made missteps, but the pace of the game was increased. So the chance Absolutely. for errors was greatly increased. And with that, SKT made more errors. Huge credit to Koo Tigers for going all in yeah. with their back completely against the wall. One of the biggest things coming into every world is you see the Korean teams are always do something different. They'll always try to change up the strategy so they're not setting a precedent. You don't know what they're going to do next time. Ku went off of their books that time. That was something we really have not seen from them Group at stage, Worlds. Group stage, Tigers, right there. Yeah, they're yeah. coming back very, very strong. And now SKT has a lot to think about as they come into game four. Right now, we're going to throw it over to our analyst desk to break down Ku Tigers win. Thank you, gentlemen, and we have ourselves a series, finally, and before we get into anything, I feel like we just have to rewatch this five-for-one craziness that happens at the beginning of the game. Now, bear with us. The Ash Spectator bug is still going to be in this, so please ignore it as we go. Yeah, as we see here, it just starts off with this little bit of this courage. Kuro makes a little bit of a dangerous play, but Pulverize is already down. And then Hojin going to come in and start to clean up this fight. And Faker goes a little bit too deep. And Mother Faker, you can't <laughs> act like you forgot about Prey. Comes over the wall, takes the kill in the end, and that's just going to be the end of that team fight. Yeah, for me, just too big. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, it's right. not It'll the end of that team Two fight. very big mistakes here. Wolf failing to combo, and then SKT still continuing with the play. You could bail there. You can sacrifice your support. Alistair did get changed, so it's it's really hard to land that combo consistently well. But the fact that here at the end, two more SK team members are like, well, our team is dying, we are team players, let's just walk in and die too. That, for me, is the most confusing part of it. That's the discussion that we had about uh, the sunk cost fallacy and yeah. con men yeah. and people <laughs> <laughs> continuing. Oh. <laughs> you talked about SKT actually being good at trying to make something happen out of a losing situation, but that is a situation where it went, all went down the drain. Because this was Ku Tiger's Hail Mary. This was yep. everything on this game. Everyone go full offensive champion, screw tight zones. Everybody just try and get as many kills as you can. SKT on your screens here. After their first loss at Worlds, and as you mentioned, Monty, they were 17-0 coming into the day, 19-0 before this loss. I mean, that's got to be quite a blow, taking your first loss in a long time. And here's the question now. Do we see some of these other picks start to come out? We know that SK Telecom is a lot more prep. They played back-to-back -back game of Lulu, Alistair, uh, trying to basically snowball around their bot lane and with the Rumble all three games too. So we'll see some new stuff, I think. I think it's very easy for Koma to tell the guys, say, hey, these are the moments where it went wrong. And even though SKT got far behind, and yes, Ku played fantastic and made some nice picks, the fact that they managed to keep the game this close with that big of a goal disparity for me is still... It is just bonkers. It's just nuts. It should not be allowed to happen. You should not be able to keep a game this close with that large of a lead at the World Finals. That being said, SKT's early game has gotten worse and worse and mm, worse each true. consecutive game. Faker right. needs to stop greeting. Like, he may be the best player in the world, but he could have flashed out of at least two deaths and then he later flashed into a wall. Like, there is a frame when a uh, Thresh goes in and flash flays you for a hook. There's a frame where you can flash out of there. Holding your flash there is just ultimate disrespect and you should never die there. Well, to your point, though, about Koma, the coach, being able to right the ship to a degree, though, there's an element of this is the first punch SKT has taken, so the players are the boxer here who have finally got hit after throwing 19 consecutive punches that have landed. Koma can only do so much to shake them out of the actual physical pain of being hit for the <laughs> Guys, first time in a while. Let me tell you about a little something we have in North America called the reverse sweep. Oh. <laughs> we, we were very experienced with I, it. I don't know anything about reverse sweeps in Koreans at all, no. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you don't. No. No, no memories of reverse sweeps there, right, Crapo? <laughs> Only best of threes where we won, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, SK Telecom, they started out their careers. Their first champion's win was a reverse sweep against the KT Bullets. Yeah. So, And you know what's funny is that you bring that up. It was actually in a sort of similar style to this. When they fell behind the KT Bullets macro game, losing the first two games, they came back with pick compositions and just tried to outplay and outskirmish their opponents. And that's what really turned the series back in SKT's favor. So Faker's been here before. Yeah, I want to jump back into <laughs> this series though as we only have so much time left all the way back to champion select we've gotten some of the craziness out of the way we had said so much about how ku needs to return 
to what is comfortable for them. If it's your last game, possible last game on the stage, what do you fall back onto? And I want to point specifically to Gorilla, the guy you pointed out, Kobe, on that thresh. I mean, that's what he said. You know, it's like, side zone, forget about side zone. Mobility boots, going to continue to make plays. And he did just that. So many great flash plays. Yep. Maybe they oh. should have been flashed I out mean, of, but. He made the perfect play, right? The only, the only, he did everything he needed to do. Lantern and flash, carry people forward, flash fling. It's at that point that the play can still get countered, but he did everything right He's, there. And he had the hooks landing yep. basically around minions yep. he was curving, like curving through. The yeah. <laughs> the bullet, yeah, yeah. And then the yes. other player that I want to hit, though, has to be Hojin because, again, when we look at people on the team, we had said Smeb, Gorilla, Smeb, Gorilla. Those are going to be the two guys. But Hojin here getting those early five kills, all eyes were on him. Could he make something of it? And I want to jump into our replay here. 27 minutes into the game, in the mid lane, he comes up huge with a kick. Yeah, just that was the game changing, like, not the game changing. That was just the snowball of that fight here. But overall, I'm still questioning the five kills on Lee Sin. And then well, the he maybe stone. shouldn't have taken the five kills. But what but he does here, yeah, that kick, that was fantastic. Like, that's fantastic. The three man here, especially since Lee Sin got changed, and you get actually more value from uh, kicking people, especially tanks, into other players here. That just bought enough time for, for Kuro to come in, and then the tower stayed alive a very long time, too, dealing damage. And honestly, it looked like SKT was turning it around at this point, so that was a a fight-changing kick, at least. Yeah, even in that fight, there were many moments where SKT had great plays, but Ku were able to snowball. I mean, after that fight, too, we actually saw a couple examples of SKT coming out on top. We saw that push for the mid-inhib. If it weren't for Smem's outplay in the yep. bot lane, 1v2, that would have been a huge People loss. were starting to get worried. They were up 10,000 gold. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> we got a little rocky. But Hojin, we criticized him a lot about falling behind in the jungle early. And one thing about the Ku Tigers, their first big streak in Korea came with him playing more aggressive junglers. Cinder Hulk really threw this team for a loop for a while. And I think that the changes to the jungle and the, and the disable on Gragas has really helped Hojin because now he can go back to that lease in. It be, it's becoming a more viable option again. And he certainly demonstrated what we've always known, which is that he's a great lease in player. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I need a breather after that game. The Ku Tigers have kept the series alive with that win. We'll see if they can build on that win in game four coming your way in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Ku now trying to hang on to the world championship hopes. It's working out perfectly, distributing the kills nice. Bang trying to come in now. A huge, I think I can, situation from SKT to pick up. The spell shield is on. He does not get crowd control. That's the grand challenge on Bangy. Thrust, thrust, parry. And he gets the kill. It's hit by the turret. Oh, Faker over the wall! A shutdown. That's huge gold for Faker coming in from Hojin. This is going to be Marin going down as well as he's too far from home. Over the wall! Bang's going to go down now. We're going to a game four. 